Okay, this is the video for the fifth image. This is a part two. The other video covered one through four. I'm going to run through the notes here for uh, the fifth and final study guide. Um, number one, the U.S. Bill of Rights, it protects us from the government. Can't tell us to shut up. Uh, can't tell us what religion to have, right to bear arms. Can't be forced to testify against ourselves. Uh, those are, are protections from the government in the U.S. Bill of Rights. Number two has to do with the judicial branch interpreting the laws. Uh, I just want you to understand from this perspective of checks, it's the judicial branch, in a way, being able to check the executive and legislative. They can look at the Constitution and tell the executive branch either they have to do something or they can't do something. And they can do the same thing with the legislative. That's called judicial review. The example I used to run through it fairly quickly was uh, and the Watergate scandal that came out of the 1972 election. It involved the president who had people working for him, that had people working for them, that had people working for them, that had broken into the other party's uh, headquarters to steal information during the campaign. And later on it came out that that had happened. Uh, the, the, the quick version of it would be the president, instead of saying, hey, those people are going to have to face their criminal uh, consequences for what they did, he decided that they should try to cover it up and so that nobody would find out. And eventually, people found out, they started to ask questions, and the way the, um, uh, well, what it came down to is the president had a taping system in the White House that recorded his conversations, his phone calls, and the legislative branch said to the president, you have to hand over those tapes. And the president, the executive branch, he said, no, they're mine. They said, no, they were in the White House, it's the people's house, they belong to the, the, the people, you need to hand them over. And so the question of the tapes went to the judicial branch. Are they going to have to be handed over? And uh, eventually, uh, the judicial branch, the Supreme Court said, you're going to have to hand the tapes over. And that led the president to resigning. And, uh, and so uh, he, he resigned. His vice president took over. But that's an example of the judicial branch looking at the Constitution and telling one of the branches they have to do something. Others' examples would be like the Brown case when they threw out segregation laws. They said segregation laws are not allowed under the 14th Amendment equal protection. So that's a good example of a check. Number three is just looking at a bill becoming a law. Again, shared powers. It takes the legislative branch plus an executive signature, whether it's the Congress and the President or the General Assembly and the Governor, but for a bill to become a law. And then remember, of course, the judicial branch can review a law and if they determine it to be unconstitutional, they can toss it out. So we got some uh, shared power, and then we've got a check over here. Number four, when we add amendments to the Constitution, it's just kind of a reminder, the Constitution is alive. It, it adjusts, it changes over time. Uh, it, it is not a static document. It was built to, uh, to be amendable. Uh, number five had to do with the elastic clause, allowing the government to stretch into other areas. And, and the big thing for the note is, over time, the federal government has, has typically stretched out and acquired more and more power. Uh, and so this kind of shows this, this super wedgie. In a way, who can give the federal government that super wedgie? The judicial branch can. They can say to the government, you can't do things. But over time, it seems that they get more and more power. Um, and also, the legislative branch could pass laws to limit federal power. Uh, but they don't tend to do that. Uh, number seven has to do with the veto and the veto override. These are checks. A veto is executive branch telling legislative branch, this bill was passed by you, you can't have it, so they block it. That's a veto, is a check by the executive of the legislative. It is possible in the U.S. Congress by a two-thirds vote, in the State General Assembly by a three-fifths vote, for the legislative branch to check the executive override. Uh, out of the executive veto with an override. And so the, the executive said no, and with a, a majority, a strong majority, two-thirds or three-fifths, legislative says yes. And then the bill does become a law without the president or the governor's signature. Number eight has to do with the um, executive powers. There's just three of them real quickly. Pardon, commute, expunge. If you expunge somebody's record, you basically erase it. And so presidents and governors just have this power. Uh, it seems like a judicial power, but it's sort of a, a check on, on the whole system. Uh, a governor or president can simply erase somebody's criminal record if they choose to. Uh, obviously, if they abuse these powers, they run the risk of being fired by the voters in an election 
or even impeached by a, a legislative body, whether it be the Congress or the, uh, um, the General Assembly. So expunging is to erase the record. To pardon somebody is to forgive their crime, is to say, we're not going to punish you for anything related to that crime. And so that's a pardon. I used the example of Watergate earlier. When President Ford took over, when Nixon resigned, he pardoned, President Ford pardoned President Nixon. He said, we're, not, we're done with him. We're not going to try to prosecute him and put him in prison. We're just going to leave that behind us. I'm issuing him a full pardon. And then the last one is to commute a sentence. And that would take somebody that's perhaps in prison and say, you've served this many years, but now you can go. I'm not erasing your record. I'm not forgiving your crime. There's no pardon here, but I am commuting your sentence. I think you've been in prison long enough, and so now you can, uh, you, you're, out, you're going to be out of prison uh, under these conditions. Those are executive powers that, that, that governors and presidents have. Governors have them over state issues, state laws. Presidents have them over federal laws. And the last one is, if you think of the three branches, executive, legislative, judicial, the people branches. Executive, legislative. The president, every four years in an election, the people can fire that person. The legislative branch, every two years for representatives, every six years for U.S. senators, the, the people can fire them. Those, those branches belong to the people. They're representative. They're supposed to do what the people want. Uh, the U.S. Constitution branch, in some ways, is the judicial branch. They're protected from the people, at least to some degree. And so because of that protection, they're able to not say, I want to give the people what they want. They're able to say, hey, this is, is what the Constitution requires, and therefore I'm going to do that. Uh, those are all the notes. You need to have those together. Bring them with you when you come to see me. Uh, what you'll need these for is for uh, is the CCB topic exploration. So, so go ahead when you get that together and bring those in and get that part done, and then you can go on to the exploration. If you have any questions, let me know. Hello. Hi.